Hey, Fort Niners fans, I'm Thomas Mod. Welcome into Chat Sports, and today, let's take a look at what BetOnline.com thinks about how many games the 49ers are going to win. Yes, the lines for all of the 49er games, at least the initial lines, have come out, and so they show how many games they expect the 49ers to win and which games are easier and harder. We're going to break that all down here on this video. So we'll start, of course, with the big picture. 49ers are projected to have about 13 wins, according to Bet Online, who, of course, gave us the initial lines on every single 49er game after the 49ers schedule came out just really a couple of days ago, depending on when you watch this video. I did a full schedule breakdown on the channel, so you can check that out. This is going to be similar to that, but at the same time, we're, of course, going to go ahead and look at the easiest to the hardest. The question is really going to be, can the 49ers win 13 games? They're favored in 13 games. They're underdogs in one, and I pick them in one as well. Well, so we'll go ahead and rank them from easiest to hardest, again, based on Bet Online's odds for every single team. Before we start, though, give me your prediction right now without even seeing the lines for the 49ers record. The entire record for the entire season without seeing the lines. I'm about to reveal to you guys what will the record be. Let me know in the comments, uh, the comments section right now. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the easiest game of the 49ers schedule, and that will be Week 14 at home against the Washington Redskins. They are 14-point favorites in this game, which tells you that Vegas feels very, very strongly, Bet Online feels very strongly about the idea of the 49ers absolutely blowing out the Washington Redskins, which I am behind. The 49ers will beat the Redskins. It is a better Redskins team, though, than what a lot of people remember from last year because it's basically brand new. They got Chase Young, and, of course, they added Ron Rivera, one of the more competent, one of the better head coaches recently in the entire National Football League. I do agree they will blow up the Redskins and probably will by 14 points, but it will be a better Redskins team than what a lot of people are used to. Now, you see that number for the minus 14, the line there in terms of the 49ers are favored by 14 points. Do you struggle with learning how to bet on a, on NFL games or betting on sports in general? We have you guys covered. So if you're confused by this video, you can pause it and go ahead and watch my buddy Tom's video at chatsports.com slash how to bet. The link's in the description. It's got like 50,000 views on YouTube and it is a full description on how to bet on sports. So you can watch that and then come back here the way you understand the lines that we're going to be talking about as the video progresses. So the next easiest matchup is um, looks like week five against the Miami Dolphins minus 11 and a half which honestly shows the rookie quarterback to a tug of Iloa needing to get his feet wet and progress in the National Football League rookie quarterbacks don't have a lot of success early on in their careers in the National Football League it normally takes time and so you look at a game like Miami early on does Tua have his feet set and ready to go by week five I don't think so I don't see Tua being that great this year, despite the fact that I think he was probably the best quarterback in this draft, maybe even better than Joe Burrow. But this still, again, second easiest game for the, for the 49ers in their home game, Week 5, against the Miami Dolphins. Next up, one I really don't agree with, and one that to me is a little bit surprising, is Week 1 against the Cardinals. The 49ers are apparently 10-point favorites, minus 10 there, at home against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, it is Week 1, and it is Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury. They, of course, struggled last year, one of the worst football teams in the entire NFL. They're way better, and I've said this many, many times during the 49ers you're probably tired of me saying that Kyler's going to be better, Cliff's going to be better, the defense will be better, they got Isaiah Simmons, and guess what? They also got DeAndre Hopkins. Minus 10 to me is a little bit a little bit uh, nice there in terms of for the 49ers. Remember, they struggled against the Cardinals the, both the games last season. I think more minus 7, minus 5 would make a little bit more sense. They say minus 10 probably because it's home and week 1, but overall, I think that's a little bit generous towards the 49ers. Still a win, but a lot harder game than what Vegas, of course, is showing you right here being their third easiest game. Question for you guys here. Currently on the roster, who is your favorite 49ers player? Out of all the players currently on the 49ers roster, who is your favorite? Let me know in the comment uh, section. I'm going to give you guys my favorite here in just a little bit. little hint, it's, it's George Kittle. We have a little uh, a little something to go with George Kittle as well, so stay tuned for that. Um, moving on, next easiest game here, according to Vegas, is Week 6 at home against the LA Rams. I looked at the Rams' schedule and the lines for the Rams. The Rams are not favored in a lot of their games. And the 49ers, again, at home, are 6.5-point favorites against the Los Angeles Rams who might be the worst team in the NFC West, which is saying something because the Cardinals are going to be probably the third best team, probably an eight-win football team. Are the Rams that bad? Are they really going to be the worst? I think the Rams are going to be fine this year. Again, seven, eight, maybe nine wins makes sense. I think six minus six and a half makes a lot of sense here for week six against the LA Rams. Next up, week three. Again, we're going from uh, easiest to hardest games for the 49ers. So it starts as a high plus minus, you know, so minus 10, where we kind of got started with, minus 14. And it'll go all the way up until the one game they're not favored in, which you'll see here at the end of the video. So we're on to week three against the yeah, New York Giants. This one is a road game. So again, the line changes a lot between home and, and, uh, and uh, away games. 
on the road against the Giants. Week three, minus six and a half. It's another team that's going to be better than they were last season. More Saquon in terms of uh, reps. Like obviously, Daniel Jones in year two. They addressed the defense in the NFL draft. And they have a new head coach in Joe Judge, which you never know. Might be good, might not be. Who knows? Still should be a 49er win, but it will be a long road trip here to the West Coast or to the uh, East Coast because, as you see, the one week before that is your next hardest game, which, of course, is the New York Jets, which are minus six. Interesting, the Jets are a little bit harder in terms of minus six, six-point favorites, and six-and-a-half-point favorites between the Jets and the Giants. I'd be both teams very similarly. And Sam Darnold didn't get a lot of weapons this offseason. Obviously, they got Denzel Mims in the NFL draft, but a lot of veteran weapons there in New York, to me, is kind of the big problem right now for Darnold and the Jets. They should be good to go in terms of in that division with no Tom Brady. Buffalo, probably the favorite, but the Jets, are they the second-best team in the AFC, uh, AFC East, actually, not North, AFC East? That'll be the question, but again, both of these should be wins, but interesting that the Jets are protected to be a little bit harder on the road. Same stadium, MetLife Stadium, than as the New York Giants. Now, I mentioned George Kittle being my favorite current 49er, so we got you guys some George Kittle gear. Look at all the George Kittle products you guys can get right now at chatsports.com slash Kittle. All you gotta do is go to and put that link up there in the Google search bar or go in the description box and click the link as well, chatsports.com slash Kittle. If you love George Kittle, which a lot of you guys probably typed Kittle earlier on in this video, show him some love and actually wear and rep him on your daily uh, you know, commute to work when you're hanging out with your friends. All the George Kittle gear you see is all authentic there, chatsports.com slash Kittle. All right, game's getting a little bit harder despite the fact the 49ers are still favorites. Week 13, how about this one? At home against Buffalo, they're six-point favorites. I'm a little bit surprised by this one because Buffalo, to me, like I just said, probably the best team in the AFC East and a very good football team overall dating back to last year. They won 10 football games and really were the big challenger to the New England Patriots that almost got there to win the AFC East for the first time in like, you know, four years. 40 years or whatever it is with Tom Brady. Not 40 years, but still, you, you, you get my point. A little disrespectful disrespectful to Buffalo. Again, it's less than a touchdown. It's right at a touchdown, six, seven points. But overall, I think the Bills are going to be a better football team than a lot of people realize. Still a 49er win, but minus six points is surprising. But not as surprising as Week 17. This is a home game, which will probably be a win and you are the, the uh, NFC West champ game like it was last season against Seattle, and the 49ers are six-point favorites. Now, the roster for the 49ers is way better than Seattle, but it's a little disrespectful to a guy like Russell Wilson and Pete Carroll who have been there and done that and were an inch away from winning the NFC West last year. Don't take Seattle lightly. Don't take this minus six points lightly at all because, as you'll see coming up, it kind of flips whenever the 49ers go on the road to CenturyLink Field to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Again, it should be a 49er win. The 49ers are better than every single football team that we look at on this schedule. I'm just talking about, hey, minus six points of touchdowns, kind of a lot for a team that was very, very close to beat the 49ers last year. Be a little more respectful, Vegas, as we keep looking at this overall. This one's a little bit of a head scratcher. Week four against Philadelphia, again, being more in terms of harder than the Seattle game in week 17. That's where Vegas kind of messes things up a little bit. Yeah, it's only half a point. Eagles are, or the 49ers are five and a half point favorites, but still week four, Carson wins a long road game for him going all the way to San Francisco Sunday night football. I have 49ers have a big edge here in this game. And that's why you look at minus five and a half. I say Seattle should have been at least higher than Philadelphia, but I digress. I don't make this stuff up. I just, of course, am reporting what we were reading, of course, from Bet Online. Next hardest game, how about week nine against the Green Bay Packers, where the 49ers are five and a half point favorites? This, to me, sounds about right, and honestly, should be kind of ahead of uh, the Eagles. So, how I would have ranked the final, or the, the last three weeks, Seattle the hardest, Eagles second hardest, Packers the third hardest, because the 49ers have had the Packers number the past couple of years, especially last year in the NFC Championship game. I think Aaron Rodgers is frustrated. Will Aaron Rodgers be frustrated by this point in the season, week nine? Very real possibility. Sure, five and a half points makes sense because the Packers still have a decent amount of weapons and a good defense and a pretty good secondary. But overall, again, I think the Eagles and Seahawks are probably harder games despite the fact that Vegas rated them just like this. Now, we get into the games that to me make a lot more sense uh, in terms of the Cardinal game. On the road in the Cardinals, it's five and a half points. So, so, so think about that. Week one, the Point Niners were 10 point favorites at home. You go on the road to Arizona, that gets slashed basically in half there. Five and a half point favorites against the Arizona Cardinals. Again, for the reasons I keep saying, they're going to be a good football team. Don't be surprised the Cardinals are the second best team in the NFC West, maybe even better than Seattle next year. Will that actually happen? Eh, you know, Russell Wilson has something to say about it, but just don't sleep on the Cardinals. I'm trying to just emphasize do not sleep on the Cardinals this year because they're going to be good, and the 49er fans should obviously be ready for that. That way they're not surprised if the Cardinals, you know, pull off an upset in one of the two games. 
Then it gets a little odd. So you talk about the Rams, and the Rams, of course, again, it's just showing the discrepancy between away and home games. So at home, the 49ers were six and a half point favorites. On the road, they are two point favorites against the LA Rams. So Vegas telling you that the Coliseum is hard to win. And now it's not going to be the Coliseum. It's going to be the brand new Rams Stadium. At least that's the hope right now. I know a lot of stuff's going on in terms of things, you know, the, the, the whole thing going on in the world that you guys know all about. Will they be playing in the Rams Stadium? Hopefully, but at the same time, it's interesting that it's already given them a, a much higher boost for a home game in Los Angeles versus an away game against the 49ers. Now, we're going to get into the final four games here in a second, which obviously are going to be the hardest four games because we're going from easiest to hardest. What is the 49ers' easiest game, though? We'll ask you guys the hardest game later, but what is the easiest game on the schedule for the 49ers? Let me know in the comment section. All right. Here's the weirdest one out of all of them. I know I've been really picky about, oh, well, that team's better than they're saying. Oh, that doesn't make a lot of sense. This one makes no sense. On the road, week seven, New England, the 49ers are only two point favorites. The 49ers are only two point favorites, according to, of course, Bet Online, against Jarrett Stidham, who'll be a first time starter for the uh, Patriots, who, of course, was a former Bear, uh, ba Baylor Bear and uh, Auburn Tiger. And who else, right? Sonny Michelle, I guess. Bill Belichick. Belichick's a great coach. They have a great defensive scheme. And, of course, playing against Jimmy Garoppolo, that's interesting. But two-point favorites, that's it? You're telling me that that's a harder game than the Packers, the Eagles, the Seahawks, the Bills, even the Cardinals on the road? No, I don't buy it. But, again, just reporting what we're seeing here. I think the 49ers are going to blow out New England. I think Jimmy G gets a big revenge game, despite the fact that uh, Belichick's going to try and prove that keeping Brady and shipping Jimmy G off to San Francisco, good for the 49ers, was also good for the New England Patriots. Here you go. Final three games. Week 15, it's a pick em against the Dallas Cowboys. You know, on the road against the Cowboys, it's, I guess, a difficult stadium to play in because of how big it is. I've been inside a, a, a AT&T Stadium multiple times, been in the press box, called Baylor Games from the press box up there. It's fantastic. It's not a very good home advantage, though. I mean, AT&T Stadium never gets very loud in terms of whenever the Cowboys are playing at home. Even postseason games. I've been there in the postseason. It doesn't get that loud. Just ask Tom Downey over there at the Cowboys Report for in chat sports. It's not that great of a home field advantage, and yet, here we are. It's a pick'em game in terms of the line for the 49ers. Week 8 is the next hardest game, and this one, to me, should have been the hardest game, but it's not. The second hardest game on the 49ers schedule is the Seattle Seahawks in week 12, another pick -em. That makes a lot more sense than the 49ers being six-point favorites against Seattle uh, at the very end of the year. On the road, CenturyLink talk about Dallas not being a big home field advantage. We know CenturyLink is. It's the hardest place to go in and win a football game outside of probably Arrowhead in the entire National Football League. That, to me, should be the hardest game, and yet it sits there at the second hardest game overall. Number 10, or sorry, the final game, Week 10. The hardest game, according to Bet Online for the 49ers 2020 season, is on the road against the Saints. Two and a half point favorites are the New Orleans Saints. The only game the 49ers are underdogs in will be Week 10 against the New Orleans Saints, according to the odds makers at Bet Online. There you go. That's the whole list. Now, the Saints are going to be good this year, but the question is can Drew Brees. I guess shake off the playoff loss last year and then the playoff loss in the NFC title game and the playoff loss in the Minnesota Miracle and come back to being another dominant football team and what's going to be a very competitive, ergo Tom Brady, ergo Matt Ryan, and FC South. So will the Saints be the hardest game? Eh, probably not. I think the Seattle will probably be the hardest game overall. But that is the full breakdown of the lines, of the odds, and what game the 49ers are favored in. 13 overall, two pick them, and one underdog. We break it all down here on Chat Sports. What is the hardest 49er game? Well, that will lead with this question. What is the hardest game on the 49er schedule? Let me know in the comment section down below right now. All time we have for today, though. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this breakdown. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.